So I'll just start. We're going to talk about gamifying a traditional market. Um, the lessons we have learned at Joytunes uh, from our own experience, from our own journey, uh, what it means at traditional markets, the, the challenges it poses, and, um, and of course, how to overcome them. Um, so yeah, before I start, uh, I want to say just a few words of background about Joytunes, uh, who we are, what we do, some of the very cool accomplishments we had lately, um, why we chose a traditional market, what, why would anybody choose such a difficult market, and uh, how to work through the challenges, overcome them, and even more importantly, how to turn around some of these challenges into opportunities. Um, first, just, uh, just a few words about me, my, because I'm coming from a completely different background and, and angle. Um, I'm a performing classical musician, and uh, I studied in Germany, and it was uh, even in Germany that, no doubt, is one of the world's most prominent cultural uh, centers. It was very obvious that music education is fighting a losing battle uh, for children's attention uh, against video games, uh, computer games, and apps, and all that. And it was then that it occurred to me that music education hasn't really changed in 400 years. I mean, I've been getting the same exercises to do that I know, but Bach did himself 300 years ago. And um, this is where Joytunes comes in. Uh, Joytunes is, um, is enabling anybody to learn the music, uh, a musical instrument, the music instrument of his dreams. And we do that, um, first of all, with our core technology. We have uh, our Music Sense engine, which enables us to um, hear, to listen to any musical instrument and give immediate real-time feedback, um, basically turning that musical instrument into the game controller. Um, so on top of the game gamified layer, or uh, maybe I should say beneath that gamified layer, there's also a strong pedagogical layer. That's where I come in, in the company. And so while you're, um, while you're playing a game, you're actually becoming better at your instrument and you're getting, um, um, uh, gaining musical skills. So, um, yeah, the goal, as I said, is to, to enable anybody to, to learn music in a fun way, very easy way, efficient, affordable, and a very, very accessible way. We want to make the world much more uh, filled with musicians. That's basically our goal. So I want to start with just um, uh, a small uh, a demonstration just to get a sense of, of one of our apps. Uh, this is the, the app preview. I'm very proud of that one. I composed the music for it. So um, what we're, uh, yeah, I'll try to navigate here. So this was Simply Piano. This is a very uh, brand new app that came out just last month. It's geared towards uh, self-learners, meaning people who want to learn piano by themselves. But we have other apps for piano teachers and students, for families and kids. And uh, across all our uh, apps, we have, um, we're seeing more than one million uh, songs being learned, being played every week. I'm also very proud to say that uh, our apps became a primary tool for uh, piano teachers, uh, especially in the U.S. Uh, almost 10% of uh, piano teachers in the U.S. use us on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in, their, uh, in their lessons. Um, also, a very cool discovery from last week. Um, um, as you can see in the picture here, it was taken by Roe, one of the co-founders he was visiting, visiting San Francisco, and it seems that uh, our apps are being uh, preloaded or built in into iPads in the Apple retail store, um, demonstrating they want to demonstrate the capabilities of the iPad, and they chose our apps to do that, and that's super cool. Um, we're also promo going to be promoted in uh, music stores, buying new keyboards, um, nice coverage from press, and so on. Um, uh, Simply Piano was the number one product, uh, uh, number one voted on uh, Product Hunt. All very good results, but done in a, in a very um, traditional market. And wha I want to talk about that market just for a second. Um, the education market or any other traditional market, um, maybe it's um, 
really obvious to say, but it's still worth mentioning that it's a very, uh, very slow moving market. It's uh, filled with late adopters. Um, it's plagued with disbelief, with people concerned about their jobs and what it means to, to incorporate something new. Um, the default is for them to say that something new is not going to work for them. Um, they often use very old tools and methods from what we've seen, from what I've seen, uh, calling them old or out outdated is, uh, is very uh, a nice way to say that. And um, to be frank, education is not a very sexy field. Uh, just as an anecdote, a few years ago, I attended uh, an investors meeting and uh, this investor, one of the um, prominent investors in Israel, he was talking very highly about education, about his will to donate a lot of money for education, but he exp explicitly said he will not invest a dime in education. And um, I'm very happy that this trend is, is shifting. We can already sense that in Israel and also in other places in the world, in Silicon Valley, of course, and also in China. Um, but the question is still, why, why do it? Why go for this such a problematic, such a challenging market? Why do other companies do that? So one good thing I can, um, I can say about the market, a traditional market, is it usually involves a lot of money uh, a lot of energy uh, spent and a lot of time wasted. And this is actually a, a very good place, very good opportunity for us entrepreneurs to find some pain point and address that. And uh, there are a lot of pain points in, in, in these markets. But I think one of the, um, most, the strongest arguments I can make for a traditional market is disruption. Um, if you can successfully create a product with it, which is uh, disrupting for a space, that's very, very cool. That's the opportunity to actually do something meaningful, to actually to make a dent in the world. And for us Joytunes, that's the, the, the goal to make the world a little bit more musical. And that's of course, for me, that's amazing. And that's on the value side. And of course, but it goes also for the business side, um, which is um, uh, companies who are successful in creating a disruptive, uh, disruptive uh, product in a space, doesn't matter which space, are very often, more often than not, are going to be very, very big companies, monstrous companies even. That's also very, very cool. Um, so now I wanna talk about um, the challenges that we're facing uh, dealing with uh, such a market. The first challenge that we encountered in Joytunes is actually the designing of a new product. When you go ahead and, and, and start designing a new product, of course, you need to investigate, you need to Id identify your market's uh, pain points, your target audience pain points, but you should really try to avoid um, um, designing and uh, developing your, your product based on only on responses and feedback you're getting from these people. You, this sounds weird, but you should remember that often, very, very, very often, uh, these people are gonna be very conservative, very old fashioned in their way of thinking. So you should really try to listen to their, to their pains, but don't necessarily embrace their solutions. Try to find your own solutions, and that's already a very good starting point for a disruptive, um, for a disruptive product. The second challenge we, we encountered are the expectations. This is a very big problem. We had that a lot. Um, even if you, uh, you manage to, to create a wonderful product, which is 10 times better than anything else in the market, in their space. Uh, this, this, uh, your solution is very often not gonna be what they expect and, and what, they, what they think they, they need. And the initial responses, the feedback you're getting uh, might be very poor. They, 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 they will say that they don't get it, that they don't, they don't think they need it, they don't understand um, why is it there or, or um, it, they don't think it's gonna work. As I said, the default is to say, a new thing is not gonna work for me. And uh, the work the, the work through for, for this problem is presenting a tang tangible results as quickly and as clearly as possible. And on the product side, and of course also on the marketing side, what we did in Joytunes when we had this uh, a few years ago, we launched um, a, new, a new game, a uh, recorder, recorder teaching game called Recorder Master. And uh, we had this, uh, we encountered this, this challenge and we decided to conduct um, small scale research. We found three classrooms with for recorder students, real classrooms. Uh, one served as a control group and we managed to prove that using Recorder Master 
in a classroom setting uh, elevates um, motivation to practice, motivation to play, and of course, these, these kids were progressing much, much better, much faster than the other kids. And of course, everybody can connect to proven results. The other side of that, of course, is also uh, creating a product which is extremely fun for the kids. And here I have an, uh, uh, another example. Let me try this. Yeah. So this is taken from one of our other apps, uh, Piano Maestro. Of course, you play that on your own piano. So the initial, re the initial responses to this to this thing were not very good. Teachers would say um, that the notes are sliding, and uh, and that it's not going to be clear and uh, clear enough to read. Um, that the colors are too bright, too shiny, and it will be distracting for the kids. But actually, the fact was that kids were absolutely loving it. You would sit a kid on a chair, he would look at it, one, one look, and he would absolutely love it, and they would progress much faster. And combining these two elements um, really helped us overcome that and, um, and dissolve uh, many of the objections we've been getting. Um, just to share a few of the responses we used to get, and we, we are still getting a lot. Um, I wasn't sure about it, but my kids love it, or never thought they could make so much progress. I want you to, to notice the notion of disbelief uh, as the base for e each of one of these uh, responses, and we got a lot of these. Um, yeah. So uh, the next challenge uh, I want to talk about is the fact that education is boring. Education for kids that's at least what uh, a lot of people think, that education is boring, that kids don't like education, they would rather do something else. And um, actually, that, because of that, many people refrain from dealing, from focusing on education. And if you look at it on a, from a different perspective, that's actually another um, opportunity to shine uh, as we see it. Um, you have to remember, I'm talking mainly about gamification. Uh, you have to remem remember that uh, some of the other products in this field are uh, uh, in education are textbooks or in music education that's sheet music that are these are um, black and white solutions and if you add gamification to your product you're already sticking out from the crowd so what we did in JoyTunes we added the the three three star system uh, rewards uh, score breakdown level ups competitions uh, just a little bit of uh, meta game and uh, there's a lot of opportunity to to use gamification uh, in this field and the advantage is that you're not uh, competing against, against uh, Angry Bird 2 because there is uh, other underlying motivation for people to play. And this is, this is a very important point. You're not competing against AAA games. You're, competing, uh, and you're not competing with the screen time against these, uh, these games. Um, another opportunity to shine is with, uh, with your business model. Um, the free-to-play models that are very common in, in many games uh, in our field became, um, oh my God, it's free for teachers that are usually, that are used to paying premium for everything. And when we opened our apps to be free for teachers, we found ourselves featured in Fast Company, no less, with this headline. Joint Tunes now free for music teachers on its big strategy shift. Of course, this had a lot of uh, impact on our numbers. Um, yeah, so... The next challenge, um, education versus fun for this gamification. Uh, finding the balance between the two. Uh, we had a lot of arguments, a lot of battles in the office, trying to find that exact point which is somehow, um, somehow it answers both directions. Um, and I want to share with you some of our attempts which actually failed. Uh, I think that might be interesting. This is um, our first the, the game I mentioned before, Recorder Master. Um, from a few years ago. As you can see, there are birds coming from the right, and if you're not, pl you're not playing the right note at the right time, they go over the character and they poop on it. We thought it's very funny. Kids actually thought it's hilarious, but uh, a lot of parents and a lot of teachers didn't really think so. Um, we got a lot of responses and feedback about that. I want to just share one of them, because I thought the very nice, nice response. When a player misses a note, the bird seems to defecate on the recorder. This is distracting to kids and the teaching process. I especially like the word defecating. Um, so obviously we had to change that. 
Um, another example is the app you just saw. It didn't actually start like this. It started like this. Because our game designers thought it's much cooler to have kind of a perspective view for sheet music. It looks much cooler. But we received a lot of uh, feedback and complaints from both teachers and students that it, it makes it actually much harder to read. So we had to change it back to the more standard way of presenting sheet music. Um, another issue was content. Uh, we all know that content uh, is a very big driver for people towards music. People want to play the songs that they like, the songs that they know. And so we licensed a whole bunch of songs and put them in the app. One of which was Pitbull with Timber from Pitbull. Uh, with over 600 million uh, views on, on YouTube, everybody likes the song, it's a great song. But this is just a segment of uh, the video clip on YouTube. And these are a part of the lyrics. Um, Twerking in their bras and thongs, timber, face down, booty up, timber. Not really kid appropriate. And uh, yeah, so we really have to, to be aware of the content you put inside. Uh, that's a very big issue, of course, as you can expect for, with parents. And, you, the, and the difficulty here is finding content which is both fun and people are very attracted to, but still appropriate for children. Um, there are places, I would argue that there are places that education and gamification can actually work together, can actually coincide uh, together. And, um, and I'm talking about using education as a retention mechanism. What you see here is, uh, is actually taken from our, our latest app, Simply Piano. This is the view of the journey, uh, which takes you hand by hand through the learning process and teaches you everything. And you actually are uh, you're keeping up with this learning process because you want to get to a, a more advanced scale level, to a more advanced song. You want to be able to, to play chords that we're teaching later or to accompany live singers, which we have later. So this is the uh, retention mechanism actually used. And this is actually the opposite of gamification. Uh, we're not uh, taking a, uh, uh, an, a traditional educational problem and adding gamification mechanisms to, to help it. We're doing the opposite. We're applying education on a game and using the education as a, as a retention mechanism. Um, yeah. Uh, another point is that games, uh, in the gaming industry, we're, uh, we're very likely to think of parents as the enemy. We're uh, fighting parents over screen time. We're fighting parents over uh, paying for apps. They don't want to pay for apps or games, and we want them to pay. We're fighting them. But in this field, in the educational field, uh, parents are actually our friends, and both the kids' friends at this age, and also the developers' friends, because we are all in the same, on the same side here. We want to make the kids sit down and learn. And we can actually use parents, use, uh, use this thing actively to uh, encourage retention. What we did in JoyTunes, uh, for instance, we created this um, share the moment uh, feature, which uh, they, they're taking their own photo. This is a real photo. And uh, attached to it is, uh, is their performance. They just performed the song. And they can send that to their, to their parents, to their children, to, not children, to parents and to their teachers. And um, the parents and the teachers are getting weekly reports from us, showing them exactly how their students or how their kids did at home, uh, tidbits of information, um, of skills they learned this week. Uh, for parents, they can also um, give positive feedback. feedback. With a click of a button, they can have the child get uh, a cool animation and bonus points uh, the next time they're opening the app. So we're doing everything we can to actually harness the power of, of, of parents, getting them involved, and using them to help us with retention. Um, the last point I have um, is the challenge of uh, the education not being uh, very sexy, but the opportunity to turn that around and say that disruption is super cool. And that can help you in several, uh, several ways, I think. Uh, the first thing is uh, for hiring. Um, of course, hiring is a big problem for a lot of us uh, in, in, the, in, in the gaming industry in, in, in general. And uh, it seems that people are very much attracted to the, to the opportunity to actually do something meaningful, to do something that, that, is, that has an influence on the world. And that's, for us, that became a very big, big um, card that uh, for us for, for finding good people. 
Um, another thing is attention from um, Apple and other Android uh, platforms. Uh, you should remember that they're, they're looking for ways to demonstrate the, the power of their devices all the time. And um, this is, by the way, how we got to be, uh, to be re preloaded on the iPads on the Apple retail store. There's no better way of showing the, the, um, showing the strength of a device by, uh, than, uh, than using an, an app that is completely disruptive of, uh, of, uh, of a field. And uh, last is press. Uh, very surprisingly, um, just an example, when we uh, launched um, Recorder Master that you see there, we were very surprised. I mean, this is not, not very uh, sophisticated game. Um, visuals are, are pretty basic, not a very sophisticated gameplay. And um, it got very, very good coverage, uh, first from uh, the next web and also afterwards from The Guardian because um, you're turning around. This to be an opportunity. Um, yeah, so to summarize, um, there are a lot of challenges, but, but there are ways to work through them. And actually, um, you can turn these challenges into opportunities to shine uh, product-wise uh, with the press, um, hiring, hiring your team, and also getting attentions of platforms. Remember that parents are your friends. Use them for retention and uh, also use education as a retention mechanism. Education can be fun if you use it uh, in that way. So uh, thank you very much. That was it. Uh, if you have any questions, and I'll, I'll be happy to answer if you want to um, join us in the team, that's also, I'll, I'll be love, I love to talk about that as, as well. Thank you. Maybe you sh uh, can share with us some insights about where are you going next and what's uh, in store? Uh, any new instruments, maybe? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've been getting this a lot, actually. Um, as you can imagine, our, uh, our goal is to make this uh, possible for any audience, kids and, and grown-ups, um, for any instrument. I mean, so anybody can learn the instrument of their dreams uh, with us. Uh, and I truly believe, if not us, then somebody else, this will be the future of music education uh, for beginner level uh, in any case. And this is, by the way, not replacing teachers uh, in, any, in any way. I'm the first one to say I'm, I'm, I'm a music teacher myself. I'm the first one to say that this is not replacing and you can never replace a music teacher, but you don't need a music teacher to, to actually uh, master some motoric skills and coordination issues. You need music teachers to give you the extras. Um, so yes, we want we to take it um, for other instruments as well. I'm afraid this is going to take some time. If it was up to me, we, had, uh, we would have an uh, oboe master and the violin master uh, apps uh, right away. But there are uh, there are other things we need to do first. We we want to take this this our apps are just for iOS right now for Apple. So the next thing is going to take it to um, going to take this to uh, to Android, and uh, hopefully then uh, guitar, drums, violin, oboe, anything else. I had a quick look. So I'm assuming you guys make your money through microtransactions. Um, can I ask? Do you find that most of your users are paying to let's say get access to more content? So you know more songs bigger library? Or are your users paying more to be able to buy more modules in the system? So, Well, um, we have, um, in the past few years, we have changed our model, actually. Uh, we used to be about buying um, songs, buying song packages uh, in our previous apps in Piano Dustbuster. Uh, that worked uh, pretty well, but not well enough. Um, I can say that content was the, a, a big driver for, for these transactions, of course, and we used that for everything, actually. We, we would give a free song if you would um, like us on Facebook, if we you would uh, follow us on Twitter, everything like that, and that worked perfectly, by the way. Um, but right now, we, are, we um, decided to shift directions, and we are actually uh, completely free for, uh, for teachers and students. For self-learners using the the Piano, Master app, Piano Maestro app, uh, they're paying for a subscription, actually. So it's kind of, we, we, we look at it and we um, transmit that this is actually kind of a gym for, for piano. Um, so it's a platform for practicing. By the way, we have uh, method books inside uh, so you can actually access real physical um, uh, books inside, incorporated inside the app. So you actually save money in some ways. 
Um, but uh, but we are actually right now about um, distribution and not about monetization. So our newest app, uh, Simply Piano, is totally free, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Marketing-wise, what do you do? Uh, how do you get more installs? And uh, what do you do about that? That's a very good question. Uh, when we were dealing with uh, teachers, um, then the, the normal, um, I would say, the traditional ways of distribution didn't really work for that. It's a totally fragmented um, audience. Um, we tried on many times on, on reaching them on Facebook, on, on s with uh, Google, ad Google ads and everything else. Uh, it worked not very well. We ended up uh, actually going to music conferences in the States. Uh, each state in the, the United States has their own music conference. So we are attending, we're attending a lot of these, giving clinics. And um, we're, we're ha having uh, power teachers, we call them, teachers who are big fans of us and are willing to work with us, uh, also giving clinics and showcasing, showcasing uh, our products in, uh, for, for teachers. So that's how we distribute it for teachers. But uh, now with Simply Piano, we found out that um, um, we tried several things. Uh, one of them was to, um, to turn to YouTube, uh, YouTube um, content providers, like people giving piano lessons on YouTube, which have a lot of uh, following and offering them a chance to work with us and kind of uh, in that model, and that's, that's working pretty well. Um, in general, YouTube is working for us uh, pretty well. Uh, but you can, you, I mean, all that is, has, uh, is, is very low compared to just organic uh, distribution that we're seeing from the App Store. Uh, so it's basically, if you're, uh, if you're getting Apple love or not, uh, that's basically it, so that we, we uh, we started also doing a lot of um, a lot of actions to to be loved more by Apple. Let's say that. Of course, that was one of the biggest challenges we also dealt with. I, I didn't uh, say all the challenges we had, but uh, at first, when we launched Piano Maestro, which was geared towards piano teachers, uh, we launched it only with our own journey, or with our own methodology uh, of how to how to learn piano. This was, of course. Uh, done with the research of many, many uh, method method methodological books. Um, we decided to go with some direction and, and to in implement some of the new options of the new media. Uh, but we soon found out that a lot of teachers, a lot of, there, are, there were a lot of elements that were uh, consistent in all the method methodologies, but, um, or most of them, but there are a lot of different approaches. And this is why we started adding books Actually, inside, we wanted to add a lot of different books with different approaches to their app so uh, every teacher can actually find his own, um, or uh, to some extent, find his own methodology inside. That's how we went, went for it. So when we just launched Piano Maestro, these are all um, very much has, have to do with Piano Maestro. The, 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 that one is more geared towards the piano teachers. So we launched the app, and then we saw the responses and we identified a lot of problems that we have in the, in the product. One of them was using it in a classroom setting because when you're, you're teaching in a large classroom, you have 10 different keyboards and we're picking up the, what you play acoustically. So every time you would pick up what the, your neighbor is playing. So for that, we developed uh, the ability to, to have as input to have a MIDI cable. Um, so we basically, we adjusted, we launched it, and then we saw what we need to adjust. We added the, met the, the other methods uh, for the other question, and we added the ability to, um, to, um, to plug in a MIDI cable as input, and we market a lot of ideas and, um, and a lot of uh, um, activities. We had a, a page on our website for activities in a classroom setup. Uh, what, what you can do with it, uh, sometimes, you know, if you wanted to change something, it was a very... Um, um, pricey development process. It was much easier to find, just be very creative and find ideas for activities you can do in a classroom setup, uh, competitions, and have uh, bring three people and have them play, each plays one note from, from the three that you have in this level, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of other uh, options we, we had for activities, and that worked for us to some extent. Yeah, yeah so I mentioned before, the we're sending teachers um, um, weekly reports, very extensive actually, um, exactly 
how their, their students are doing. We have teachers with 250 students, um, obviously in the school. Um, so we're sending them reports, individual reports, exactly how much their students have played, what songs did they master, what songs did they have difficulties with. And um, at first, uh, actually, we, we thought that they won't use it uh, because um, all the teachers told us that, uh, yeah, I know the first three minutes of a lesson, I know exactly what happened at home this week, but actually, they're really using it. They're really opening it. The open rates for our reports are over 40%. Uh, open and, and uh, open rates and click rates. So um, so this uh, as this is one of the things we did for teachers to to accommodate uh, the product for teachers' needs. Um, I hope I answered that question. <laughs>